lot of people think about sea ice as a platform for seals and for, for uh, polar bears, but there's much more to it, and, and that is the microscopic life that occurs within the ice. And what we do in this module is we, we show the students what kind of life forms exist in the sea ice, how they are distributed within the sea ice, and why. Why do we take water samples? Biology and water. So we want to compare the biology that we have in the sea ice to the biology that, that happens in the water. And um, the idea is to, to, to demonstrate to you that there are very distinct differences that make the sea ice production at this time of the year very relevant for the ecosystem. So how does it work? This, this instrument goes into the water in this open fashion. It's called a camera bottle because that was designed by a scientist with the name camera. So it's going in that way into the water. And the way it's working that you send down a weight, it's called a messenger weight, which you attach to the, to the rope. And to secure it, here's a tether. So you open it, you put it on the, on the line, and then you close it, make sure it's closed, otherwise we will lose the messenger, we have only one. And then you send it down and it's closing. Then you get it, bring it back up onto the ice. And a good way to hold it, that you don't lose the sample, is by holding it with one hand here at the bottom. Are you? <laughs> you ready to do three? Yes. Yeah. should be red. <laughs>
-hmm. then when you melt the rest of that bulk ice, which is pure, mm -hmm. it's essentially diluting the salinity of your samples. So oh, you yeah. have, so then what we need to, that would be bad for the organism. They would have osmosis issues. So then we're adding a whole bunch of other salts in the form of seawater, so that it's more buffered and we can. Yeah. Yeah. I have clean water with the same temperature and the same salinity. So all your many hours of work are now in this petri dish and you don't want to spill it and you don't want to have it warm up. Here we have now our, we have now our um, concentrated sample. We are going to analyze it completely. So now comes the best part, figuring out what we have in the sample. It's always exciting because you never know. You never know what you're going to find. New Polar discovery. Bear. Okay, here is our first friend. And I just move to the side and, and you can just look into the microscope while you're still standing. So um, I move to the left side. Okay. Um, so what you see now here in the center are two, two nematodes. Can you see them wiggling? Yep. It's a small room. So it's always a relief when you see the first living organisms in your core. It They're tells wrong. you that you didn't do any horrible errors in between. So here, I hope it, it's stuck in, in an aggregate with other algae is a copepod. It's right in the middle of the field of view. Oh, and there's something really cool in there too. In the same field of view, when you look now in there, right in the middle, that's actually a, 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 a nopleus larvae, a juvenile of a of a of a copper pot. Do you see that with the six legs, with three pairs of legs, small just above the copper pot? That that okay. Here's the next thing: a tubularian, right in the center. And that's also swimming. I think the unique chance that the students have here as, as part of this class is to get a very holistic view of the sea ice and, and realizing that, that sea ice as, as a model, that, that one component in, in nature has so many different functions. So sea ice is very relevant for the heat flux, that's a, that's a very valid question, but the system itself goes well beyond it and I think what we need to address the questions of impact of climate change in the Arctic properly are scientists who are aware of this diversity of functions of this ecosystem.